We live on one level of existence, but there are others. These hidden dimensions of reality are everywhere, far away, across the light years, beneath our feet, and even inside you and me. We are made of atoms. There are more atoms in your eye than there are stars in all the galaxies of the known universe. The same is true of any solid object larger than the tip of your little finger. I'm a collection of three billion, billion, billion intricately arranged atoms called Neil deGrasse Tyson. You are a similar collection with a different name. We don't usually think of ourselves this way because that level of reality lies beyond the realm of our senses. But we're not going to let that stop us. We can go deeper into the wonder. There was a moment when we awakened to a new way of thinking and seeing. It happened about 2,500 years ago on the Greek islands that lie between the empires of the East and the West. There, merchants, tourists, and sailors freely mingled, exchanging tales of great kings and gods. In Ionian cities and towns like Miletus and what is now Turkey, the most fundamental elements of the way we live now first appeared. The most revolutionary innovation of all to come to us from this ancient world was the idea that natural events were neither punishment nor reward from the capricious gods. The workings of nature could be explained without invoking the supernatural. The first person to express this thought was a man named Thales. When the thunder clapped or the earth quaked, it was not because something you did had somehow displeased the very demanding gods. No, it was the result of natural processes that we were capable of understanding. Though none of the books he is said to have written survived, Thales kindled a flame that still burns to this day. The very idea of cosmos out of chaos, a universe governed by the order of natural laws that we can actually figure out. This is the epic adventure that began in the mind of Thales. Only a century following Thales' death, another genius came along. And he, more than any other, was the first to discover the existence of the hidden universes that surround us. Democritus of Abdera was a true scientist, a man with a passionate desire to know the cosmos and to have fun. This is the man who once said, a life without parties would be like an endless road without an inn. You mean that's it? That's all there is? Just a bunch of atoms in a void? Yep. <laughs> well, think about it. The world has to be made of countless indivisible particles in a void. Otherwise, nothing could move or grow, be divided or change. Without atoms and empty space for them to move in, the world would be solid, static, and dead. So don't be sad, my friend. Just think of the infinite possibilities that arise from different arrangements of those atoms. They found that in some radioactive atoms, the nucleus can spontaneously eject an electron. This transforms the atom into a different element. The physicists were mystified. The energy of the escaped electron, plus that of the new atom, adds up to less than the energy in the original nucleus. But the law says, thou shalt not destroy or create energy. So where did the missing energy go? In 1930, Wolfgang Pauli predicted there must be an undiscovered particle, one that makes off with the missing energy. At the time, Pauli lamented that such a phantom particle might be so minute, swift, and evasive as to forever defy detection. But that was a rare failure of his imagination, because science is always searching for a way to go deeper still. A generation later, Pauli's neutrinos were actually detected for the first time in radiation from a nuclear reactor. And we've been finding them with difficulty ever since. There are scientists today who are trying to find a way to ride those neutrinos all the way back to the beginning of time. We'll go as far as they have gone to come up against 
the wall of forever. The wall of forever is nothing new. Our ancestors came up against it almost as soon as they first started imagining it. A million dawns ago, in the 13th century BC, the Egyptians built this temple at Abu Simbel to honor the Pharaoh Ramses II, depicted here in four colossal statues. Reigning even above this mighty king is the falcon-headed Ra Haraki, god of the sun. The temple was designed so that the light from the rising sun could only enter the sanctuary on two days every year. As the rays enter the temple, they burnish the statues of the gods with their golden light before penetrating the sanctuary. Even then, one god remains in shadow. Ta, Lord of creation, as if the origin of the universe must forever be concealed. 